Aloha again. This is Dr. Glenn Sword out. So last time we spoke a little bit about blocked regulation and how you know the body can be stuck, the body, mind, spirit, and they work together. So usually when there's blockage in one area, it affects the others. But the causality can go. It, it's a minding body. It can be, you know, psychosomatic or somatopsychic. We see both. So. Uh, when let's say we uh, unblock, maybe maybe the blockage is due to a toxin. That's very typical. It could be heavy metals, could be a, a medication, a drug uh, that's stored in the system. Maybe something that we were exposed to a long time ago. Some damage that happened combined with these factors. Maybe some deficiencies as well that that were lacking the the nutrients or cofactors or or the the angelic. Uh, qualities of different herbs and plants and other other beings that co-inhabit this space with us that are our are, are gift to us for he our healing and if we're missing those proper exact ingredients that our spirit and our body are identifying and calling for then then we're stuck we don't have the ingredients we need to make the healing recipe uh, so that can go on for for a lifetime if lacking the proper ingredients but let's say we unblock regulation now we have another problem we're going to start to eliminate the things that were stuck. The toxins are going to start moving. They're going to go through the lymph, through the blood, through the extracellular fluid, through the kidneys, the liver, the colon, the skin. We're going to have symptoms. We're going to feel it. We're going to be uncomfortable. There's suffering. Well, it, one way out of the suffering is to go back to the doctor who gave the, 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 the drug prescription maybe that was stored in the body. You know, even aspirin studies show if you have a headache and you take aspirin, you're more likely to have a headache again tomorrow. Why? Because the aspirin itself and whatever's causing the headache in, initially is still all in your head. You know, it's all in your head. And the doctors are right about that. You know, as long as it's dental issues or headaches, uh, maybe vision problems. Uh, but no, seriously, uh, it's not all in our head. Uh, even, you know, the take vision, my field, my original field of study, uh, they don't. They didn't teach us that 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 the body is photovoltaic. We're just learning that now. The, the eyes uh, allow environmental light in uh, directly to the 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 body's bloodstream. In about 40 minutes, the entire blood supply of the body is irradiated by environmental light. You know, just uh, getting outdoors. You know, our eyes adapt. It doesn't seem like we're getting that much more light, but we get a lot more light, and it's an entirely different spectrum of light, different frequencies, and frequencies make all the difference. If you're a chemist, you know that. If you want to identify a chemical compound, you have to take it in the lab and measure what frequency it absorbs or emits. It's specific. If you're off by, you know, a couple nanometers, there's no interaction, and you get it spot on, now suddenly things happen. Uh, and, and that's uh, Albert Sankyorgi, Nobel Prize winner, said all of the vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and hormones in the body are sensitive to these specific frequencies that turn on and turn off their function by 500%. So you could be deficient in zinc, then go out in, in a, a blue-green environment uh, and, and stimulate what little is in the body and have a reduction in the deficiency symptoms because the zinc itself is now absorbing its resonant frequency and going into a state of, of higher activation energy where it can enter into chemical reactions. So you don't have to be a chemist, to, though, to, to be able to benefit from natural light as, as a healing modality or to learn methods of biocommunication, which we'll, uh, we will teach, uh, get into in really detail uh, in the, the course that will follow this introductory clinical theory certification course, uh, we'll, we'll explore the many, many different languages that are available, that have been developed clinically and applied for decades around the world, uh, from German electroacupuncture to muscle testing to, you know, just our own innate uh, abilities, which many of you will be bringing to this work and to this course. Uh, so I will touch on those methods in the first course. We're really going to be looking at our model, our thinking, our concept of what it is we're dealing with because life and consciousness and spirituality and health and healing and disease is not 
just uh, you know what we were taught in school, or you know sometimes if you weren't taught in school, if you, you know, didn't go to medical school, you, you may find it a little easier to to open your mind to the big picture. You know some of the biggest questions in science, in all the sciences, remain unanswered by conventional theory. They're just not addressed. The nature of time, uh, the nature of of creation. Uh, the nature of consciousness, how consciousness relates to the physical form, how the spirit body uh, can survive death, how it can resurrect. These, these are observations. And what is science? Science is observation. So we have observations that because they don't fall within the bell curve of statistical science, which is population science, which was developed in the last century for agriculture, not for purposes of dealing with the individual unique human soul and its development here and progression in life, but for growing wheat in a field of a monoculture, nonetheless. Uh, you know, even if we want to grow optimum food, we can't treat plants as, as populations. We have to treat them as individuals in, in permaculture and, and you know, mixed agriculture types of agroforestry, etc. So, there are better solutions. We're going to integrate those. We're going to create a, and, and present a model that will give you the groundwork, the map for that terrain. The train is the train. The map is not the train. But having a good map will help you navigate that train. It'll help you to remember those parts of the parts of the territory that you haven't explored. You know, in your own case, in a given case of a, a patient or client that you're working with, having that that insight to look in another place, especially uh, in early in a difficult case where you're looking to unblock and, and improve the regulation of the case, it's going to serve you so well. Uh, so again, uh, we'll leave there uh, for today, but uh, we'll bring you more as we go along in the in the pre-pre-launch here, just introducing, beginning to introduce the 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 meets and bounds of the map, the, the outline of what it is we're going to be delving into and drilling into more deeply in this course. And uh, I invite you to join me. Thank you. Aloha. Mm -hmm.